Have you ever been out somewhere and you happen upon this group of people who are listening intently on someone talking, hanging on his every single word as if it was the gospel itself? Well, that's what we're talking about tonight, Everyday KT number 248, your story. Why it is really important to have one and you have to be able to tell it well. So, first and foremost, this story. What the hell am I talking about? Everybody has heard someone talking, telling them silly stories, always. Well, your story is everything. Those of you wearing a kilt all know that someone is going to come up and ask, why are you wearing a kilt? And you have a story for them. Not just, I have a kilt because it's clothes. That's not a story people turn off tune that out, and they walk away. That's not engaging. Um, it's not fun. It's not enjoyable. And there's no way to connect with each other if that's all you're going to say. On the other hand, you've got the person who everyone's listening to intently, your story. You're like, well, 12, 15 years ago, I was at a Scottish festival, and I was flipping through a book of all the different tartans. I said, holy crap, that's my last name. These colors look actually kind of cool. Wow, it's on sale. I just got paid. Hmm, let's make a bad decision with a credit card. Boom. Bought it. It's a story. You want to talk about, you know, their, your ancestry. Well, some people have done very significant um, historical investigation. They understand the research. They know where they're from. They can trace their lineage back up through so-and-so and whomever all the way back to whenever. And they can talk about the castles and the kilts and the, the pomp and circumstance around the ceremonies. And all of these other really cool things. But it's a story. The stories are what people love to hear. Um, in marketing, finally, people are realizing that the story of what you're doing is a hell of a lot more interesting than the fact that you have something. Me saying, hey look, I got a guitar book, you need to buy my book. Nobody cares. Or you say, so I had this guitar and I brought it wherever and I just started strumming. Next thing you know, someone comes up and says, hey, you're really good at that. Hang on a second. And they come back and they get a drum and they just start drumming along. And next thing you know, an hour later, sitting there at the pub or wherever we might be, we have a whole group of people playing random instruments, a little jam session. And, oh, you know, I didn't know how to play the guitar a year ago, but I got this book. This showed me how to go from not playing to that jam session with all those cool people. Who knows, might even actually form a, a random jam band and pops up at bars or events or whatever, random places. Much better story than, hey, I've got a book, you need to learn how to play guitar, buy my book. Same thing with kilt. You're talking with someone about the kilt. And this applies, mind you, to everything. The story is key to every part of your life. You always want a good story. If you have a good story, you can do damn near anything. So with the kilt, you're talking to someone who has no idea about the kilt. You're like, well, get a kilt. It's cool. It's fun. It wraps around your waist. And girls are going to chase you. Okay, that might work one out of ten times. But what about the other nine? You give a story. You say, well, listen, think of it this way. So you've got this kilt, right? You're walking around. Um, think it's weird. Now think about it from this perspective. Now this morning, you got out of the shower, and they're like, well, yeah. Okay, did you wrap a towel around your waist, or have you at some point in your life wrapped a towel around your waist and just walked around for a little bit? And they're like, well, yeah. And you say, felt pretty good, didn't it? I'm like, well, yeah. It was freedom you know walk around and that's all you had on i'm like exactly now imagine that feeling every single day all day long it's a story the light goes off and like ooh, i like that tell me more and then you start talking about how the kilt will attract other people it will help them in business if they're that's what they choose to do because it attracts people to you they're naturally attracted like oh that guy's different that girl's different. They're wearing a kilt. I want to go talk to them. Why are they wearing a kilt? And then you take your 
story of why you're wearing a kilt and interweave it into your business. Why the kilt is helping you with your business. As most of you know, I'm in marketing. And I tell people, I'm like, listen, marketing events, networking events, places where you go to try to get business, you can see people clamoring over each other, trying to figure out how to go talk to that new person who's never been there before. I, on the other hand, go up, talk to the bartender or whoever's tending the food or whatever, and just have a conversation with them. Because ultimately, and almost without fail, every single new person will eventually come and talk to me and say, I don't know what's going on. I saw you from across the room. I got to know what's going on with the kilt. You're the only guy here standing there wearing it, and you're not talking to anybody who didn't come to you. Why? They want to know about that. So you tell them the story. The story is like, listen, I mean, this is what I wear. You know, Go into why you're wearing a kilt in the first place. But then you weave into, well, this is why I wear it for business, because you came and talked to me. I didn't have to fight with those seven people over there, all business cards in hand, ready to give it to somebody. But you came and talked to me because I'm different. And now you have an opportunity to use your story to keep them there. So it's the story. It's key to everything. The other part is making sure you're good at telling a story. Now, I'm not that good at telling stories. I'm getting better, but it's only because I've been practicing for a long, long, long time. Most of you wouldn't believe me. 20 years ago, there's not a snowball's chance in hell I would be doing this right now. I did not like talking in front of people. I did not, in any way, shape, or form, like being in front of a crowd. Didn't like it at all. That's 20 years ago. 20 years of practice... And here we are today. I'm still not awesome at it, but I'm better than I was. And better than I was is good. Because if I can keep, there's three people watching according to the number on my phone. Um, not four. So keeping three people engaged talking about this for 15, 20 minutes, I'd say that's a success. Hopefully, I'll get to the point where I can become a professional storyteller. Where all I do is tell stories. Granted, they'd be stories about how different theories and different things that I know can help businesses get better themselves, but ultimately it's still storytelling. Even if it's conveying skills, transferring knowledge, it's still a story because the story is what resonates and what you helps you remember the different pieces of information that you're being told. So, stories. You have to have them. Life, business, personal, all of them. The better you are at having a good story and being able to tell that story will dictate where you can go. Now, one key point in the storytelling. If you're going to tell stories about your personal experiences, try not to embellish too terribly much. Because then you have to remember the embellishment, not what actually happened. So you have to be careful there because you... More often than not, you have the opportunity to make the story just a little bit more grandiose. Problem with that is it goes from catching a fish this big to catching a fish this big to catching a fish this big to catching a fish this big. Well, and then you meet somebody who's like, yeah, but I was there with you. The fish was only this big. And you don't even remember that the fish was only this big. So try not to embellish too much. I mean, you can, for color and for interest, Maybe a little bit, but you got to remember that that was an embellishment. It was not what actually happened, or it was not the exact same way it happened. So you got to be careful there. That being said, some of the greatest storytellers on the planet can take something as simple as lighting a match and turning it into a two-hour epic. So keep with that. So somebody out there put up an everyday or a kiltology, uh, volume one and two, one through five hundred seven, whichever you prefer. Uh, as you know, if you don't already, they're on Amazon. Um, Kevin, Swings for the Fences. Episode, uh, volume 2. <sighs> so, stories. So this applies. Open it up, boom, right there, stories. Kiltology number 351, Curiosity. Now, 
It is well known, or it is a well known saying that curiosity killed the cat. The only thing curiosity ever did for a kilty was get him on the business end of many curious lasses, fathers, shovels, pitchforks, and other implements of retribution. The worst part about all of that situation is the kilty was not the curious one. So, how does that apply? Simple. The story. Sometimes, especially for folks wearing kilts, the story's heard before they even met you. Especially with the internet and my videos, the story's about what we may or may not wear under our kilts is out there. So the story may be ahead of you, who you know, you're the storyteller. The story may already be known. So you have to be careful there because sometimes when the story comes ahead of the storyteller and then the person who heard the story comes and talks to you, they already have a preset idea of what they're expecting. And they expect, you know, based on many a song that has been sung many times over and over and over, that a blue ribbon is a worthy prize. So sometimes they, uh, people assume that a story for one is a story for all. So you got to be careful with that one. That being said, have fun with it. And as always, be strong. Put a kilt on.